So number five is talking about, well, how can we try to treat this disease? Well, the bad news is we have no cure as of yet, but we do have medications known as antiretroviral therapy, known as ART or ART. ART is a combination of a few types of drugs, by the way. Uh, and what do these drugs do? So these drugs, while they cannot destroy the HIV pathogen, remember the pathogen can insert its genetic material into the helper T lymphocyte, or sometimes when the virus is latent or sleeping or inactive inside the uh, lymphocyte, it can become active again and start destroying helper T lymphocytes. That's how the pathogen works, right? Well, the, the drug, number one, it can prevent the viral genetic material from entering the nucleus of the helper T lymphocytes. Okay, so it keeps the T lymphocytes safe. And number two, it keeps the virus in the latent phase, which means to say it keeps the virus inactive. So while this medication is not a cure, it helps to protect and prevent the helper T lymphocytes from being destroyed. And therefore, these medications prevent the progression towards AIDS. Because if you remember in the previous video, I did say that AIDS is what develops when the patient's immune system is extremely weak. Uh, so in this case, the drugs prevent AIDS from developing in the HIV patients. So the good news here is, by the way, if the patient starts taking ARTs, which are the medications, look at what happens to the concentration of the virus. The concentration of the virus or the viral load becomes extremely low. And because your helper T lymphocytes are protected, it starts to increase again. This is a good thing. And by the way, you don't need to memorize this graph. It's just, it's just a way to tell you what ART does. The only problem with this medication here is they have to be taken daily for it to be effective. It's very time sensitive. Time sensitive meaning to say when the person is supposed to take it uh, at 11 a.m., they have to continuously take it at 11 a.m. every single day. It cannot be like, oh, Monday I'm going to take it at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, Tuesday I'm going to take it at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, Wednesday I'm going to take it at, I don't know, 3 p.m. or 3 in the afternoon. Uh, that doesn't work. You have to be consistent with the timing. And this is where it can be a little bit difficult if you do not have proper access to the medication, right? Because, uh, so that is why we always uh, advise people with HIV if you uh, have HIV and you have to take the medication, uh, there are apps. There are apps on your phone that can help you, that can help remind you, hey, it's time to take your medication. So we have, while, that's, while it's a problem to take the medication every single day, uh, we have ways to circumvent and, um, you know, overcome this problem. So this is a good thing, right? But more importantly is how we prevent the disease. If you remember, these are the ways in which HIV can actually spread. There are blood-related, uh, sex-related, breastfeeding-related, or also pregnancy-related, by the way. So let's focus on the first one, the blood-related one. Okay. So remember, blood-related means the HIV-positive person donates blood and the contaminated blood is transfused into another person or the contaminated needle that contains the HIV pathogen is shared with another person. Well, um, the first way in preventing blood-related transmission is by testing the blood that are donated. So let's say two people donate blood, A and B, and both the blood are tested for the HIV pathogen. We do have technology to test the blood for uh, HIV and also other different types of infectious disease, by the way. In fact, we do, we have to do that. Um, and let's say blood uh, from donor A is fine, uh, and that blood can be given to other patients, but the for blood from donor B, it contains the HIV pathogen. So in that case, that blood will be rejected. Okay, so it cannot be given to other patients at all because we do not want to risk transmission. And also, donor B will be informed about their status. The hospital or the clinic will call them and say, hey, we have found the HIV pathogens in your blood. You might want to come to the clinic uh, to get further testing to confirm if you actually have HIV or not. So that's how people find out about their HIV status. Another way is to prevent needles from being shared with other people. 
Uh, for intravenous, for IV drug users, we have something called needle exchange programs. So as you can see here, one person with HIV positive, okay, they use a needle and they might share the needle with three other people. So to prevent the transmission of HIV through sharing of needles, um, what can happen is each person each of those three people, if they are drug users, they can go to certain types of clinics to get clean, sterile needles. So they do not share the needles at all. And once they use the needles to inject their drugs, they will actually give the needle back to the clinic and get a new needle out of it. So what this does is this prevents needles from being shared from one person to another. Now, a lot of students might go, wait a second, I thought drugs are illegal. Well, yes, drugs are illegal, but a lot of countries, namely like Switzerland, uh, for example, instead of punishing people, their main goal is to rehabilitate them. So if, they are, if these people are addicted, it is much better to have them receive the drugs in a safe manner. And one such safe manner is by giving them sterile needles and preventing them from actually sharing the needles with other people. So it cuts down the transmission of HIV through contaminated needles as well. Of course, another way is the sex-related way, which is the transfer of the uh, contaminated semen or vaginal fluid. So in that case, unprotected sex through the oral, vaginal, or anal route. Uh, in this case, you can actually use condoms, femidomes, or dental dams, which prevent contact with semen and vaginal fluid. Another way is actually called contact tracing. Now, a lot of my students love to ask me, what exactly is contact tracing? So let's look at a situation. Now, let's say person A has HIV and they are unaware of their status, which means to say they don't know that they have HIV. Now, they have unprotected sex with multiple people, B, C, and D. Now, person B, however, let's say, uh, because they had unprotected sex, person B was a little bit uh, worried or paranoid, and person B decides to go to the clinic or the hospital to get tested. And when person B gets tested, uh, sadly, they found out that, yes, the, the doctor tells them that you have HIV. Okay, And what happens then is, in that case, the doctor or the nurse will then ask them, would you be able to tell us uh, your sexual partner? That means, who did you have sex with? And of course, person B will say, oh, well, I had sex with uh, person A. Okay, I had sex with A. Um, so this is not victim blaming. This is not blaming or such. So what the hospital or clinic will do in such situation is, they will call A. Okay, they will get the information from B and they'll call A. And they'll say, hello, um, we, we had a patient come to the hospital, they had sex with you, and they are now HIV positive. So we think you might be HIV positive as well, so would you come to the hospital? So then A gets informed. A is like, oh God, I need to go get tested. So in that case, A gets tested too. And now, he, now person A is aware of their HIV status, and in this case, they can start having, they can start taking medications and having protected sex. So contact tracing just basically means identifying people with HIV to inform them of their risks in spreading the disease. Now, the third way, uh, I'm going to put breastfeeding related and pregnancy related together, because they can spread through the breast milk or through the or uh, through the placenta of the mother. Um, so, to prevent mom-to-child or mom-to-fetus transmission, something very interesting can happen here. Remember, if you give ARTs, which are the medication to the patients, uh, to the people with HIV positive, you reduce the viral load uh, based on this graph. The viral load is so low that it will cut down the transmission from mother to child or mother to fetus to almost 0%. So the goal here is if a woman is HIV positive and she's pregnant, uh, before she's pregnant or she wants to get pregnant, it is very important to start them on the ART because the ART will not cure them, but it will prevent them from actually transmitting the virus to their fetus or child.
And that is one of the most important things that we can do with HIV. In fact, it is also good to prevent, uh, to start people with HIV on ART as soon as possible, because when they start on ART, their viral load is so low that the transmission of HIV through sex is almost 0%. I would like you to understand this, yeah? So when a person with HIV, when a person is HIV positive, when they start the medication and their viral load is at an undetectable level, um, if they were to even have unprotected sex, chances of them transmitting the virus to another person is 0%, by the way. So this, so the, the ART works as a, treatment for the pe for the people with HIV positive, but it also works as a preventive method to stop the spread of HIV to other people as well. So as you can see here, what I'm going to show you, you don't need to memorize this one here, but these are three different studies that were done, okay, in large groups of people to prove that when a person starts with ARTs, their viral load will be undetectable and the chances of them transmitting the virus to another person is 0%. So that's the main goal for the people with HIV, to start them on medication as soon as possible. And that, that will actually, that would help to prevent the transmission. But of course, then comes the question, like always, why is it difficult to eradicate this disease? Well, the first thing is, ART is not a cure, even though we have ART, and it has to be taken daily to be effective. And while it does a brilliant job uh, suppressing the viral, the concentration of the virus, if the patient were to suddenly stop the ART for whatever reasons, the virus concentration will immediately start to increase again. And that's a problem. And the person might develop AIDS due to the extremely low concentration of helper T lymphocytes. Um, and the ART can have a lot of undesirable side effects, okay? Uh, it can cause uh, side effects to the kidney, to the liver. We are getting better at dealing with the side effects, by the way. And there are other limitations of prevention, uh, may include stigma or shame of getting tested. That is the main thing, by the way, when it comes to HIV. A lot of people might think or might suspect that they have HIV, but they are scared to go to the clinics or hospitals because they might think, what would people say? There is a shame in getting tested because um, in some parts of the world, getting diagnosed with HIV might get you fired from your job, which is, uh, depending on the type of job you have, look, um, we've had cases where um, the person, uh, I, I, can't, I can't name names because of privacy issue, but the person was uh, working in a high paying position uh, and it was nothing to do with, um, you know, they were not doctors or uh, nurses. They did not work in the hospital. They were working in financial institutions. But because their company found out that they have HIV, they were terminated from their position, okay? Okay. So, so, so this is why this is a problem. People are still, you know, a little bit iffy about getting tested because they're scared about what might happen next. Condoms, femidomes, and dental dams are not 100% effective. They might break and, uh, you know, um, they might cause the other person to be exposed to the uh, vaginal or semen, vaginal fluid or semen. And of course, the third, initial symptoms of HIV are mild or absent. And because they are mild or absent, so you have three people here who have HIV, but um, the person A might have a slight fever, person B might have body ache, and person B, C might not have symptoms at all. So they might think, ah, just a normal infection, so they might not go get tested, right? And three, uh, and, and, the, and the next one is ARTs can be expensive for people in poorer countries, uh, so it can be a, a, a problem. So ART is one of the best ways, it's the gold standard to reduce the concentration of the virus and prevent them from transmitting it to other people, but ARTs need to be taken daily and it can be a bit of a burden on people financially if they have to spend money on these medications. So this can be a little bit of a problem. 
But I would still like to emphasize that ART is still fantastic because when you are on ART with an undetectable viral load, it cuts down the transmission through unprotected sex from mom to fetus and such. So countries, instead of um, punishing people with HIV or instead of uh, shaming and stigmatizing people with HIV, they should put aside their prejudice to people with HIV and help treat the disease. By treating the disease, it also helps prevent the transmission.